Moving into the Buffalo area can be super confusing, especially when it comes to choosing a town to live in. Do you go to the North Towns where it's kind of like that more suburban-y feel? Or do you want to go to the Southern Tier where you kind of get that country slash suburban feel? Which one do you choose? It's like a really hard decision. Cheetawaga, Amherst, Hamburg, Orchard Park, like you have a lot to choose from, right? This video will help ease that stress a little bit because I'm about to give you guys the top five suburbs to move into. What's going on you guys i hope all is well as always if this is your first time to the channel welcome if you guys are returning what's going on my good people my name is Devonte davis the local realtor in and around the buffalo area and in buffalo living on this channel we talk all things buffalo and today we're going to be talking about the suburbs because it's such a hard decision There's so many different towns so many different fields all that good stuff so we're about to go through the top five lists and quite frankly we're really going to be talking about where a lot of people are moving to right now and it doesn't matter whether you're a single person or you're a family of six we're going to go over everything right now for you we use really two main websites the first one is going to be niche.com Niche.com is the best because you can leave, leave reviews, it'll give you the overall status of a lot of things, statistics, all that good stuff. Niche.com, if you guys want to know more about an area besides just from myself, or you actually want to read two, three hundred thousand reviews on, on an area, niche.com is going to be a great place. The second one is going to be Movado. This is this is really a guy that or a, a, a editor that just goes around reviewing different places, but he has some really good insights and they kind of know what they're talking about a little bit. Now, if you guys are moving up to the Buffalo area or you guys are in the Buffalo area looking to move around, looking for that next house, make sure you guys call me, text or email me. Either way it goes, you know, we always respond. We help so many people move up here and we want to help you too. All right. So number one is going to be Williamsville. If you guys are looking for a walkable, safe and probably, if not the best, one of the best school districts in and around the Buffalo area, Williamsville is definitely going to be your place for sure, especially for y'all that like that kind of work, eat, play, walkability environment. Williamsville is that place. I'm telling you guys, it does not it, it really, it really, it really is a truly walkable place. Like you can almost compare it like uh, Elm, if Elmwood Village was like in a suburb or something like that, right? And again, you get the best school districts and it's always ranked at the top when it comes to the best places to live in and around the Buffalo area. And in some years, it has been ranked at the top in the entire United States. So that's dope, man. That's really nice. Now, Main Street is gonna be like your main hub inside the village. You have everything, shops, bars, cafes, restaurants, Walgreens, tops right there so that you can do all your grocery shopping. And a lot of things are still very close by. You're talking about all of these things on Main Street are within maybe a mile of each other. So you can either take a 20 minute walk or a three minute car ride. You have restaurants, Gian Carlos, Bright Smith Brewery, uh, the Eagle Heist House, the Irishman, Spot Coffee, which is my favorite cafe in the world. Like you have so many different things of a mile of each other or an extremely, extremely short drive. And if you guys want to do something a little more upscale over there, you talk about Gian Carlos. We just went there for our anniversary. Oh my God, this food is good. Service was good, drinks are good. That's a good place. Upscale, so I would dress up a little bit. You just can't come in there with sweats and a t-shirt on, but it is a great place. And plus, again, you get the best school district, right? Now, with all these amenities, with the walkability, with everything so close by, number one, you gonna have a price tag <laughs> that comes with living in Williamsville from the house costs and most importantly, the tax bill. Look, now let's take 48 Hirschfield, right? This just sold last year. Now to live inside the village, you're gonna have a price tag on average, on average, this can be a lot higher though, depending on what you're looking for. 369,000, right? For example, let's take 48 Hirschfield. This actually just sold last year. This was up for seven days, no exaggeration, maybe 10 days. It sold for 385, but it sold for $40,000 over asking. So it was originally asking for 345, it got 385 for it. And guess what the taxes was on this house? $8,322 a year. That's a lot, that's a lot, like that's up there. Now, here's the good part. If you don't wanna 
you really care about the uh, walkability or you don't care to pay those extra village taxes, there's three schools inside the Williamsville School District, which is really nice. So you can go to a couple neighborhoods outside of Williamsville, still in Amherst, still in Amherst, but you still get access to the great school districts. You just don't have the same taxes, which is nice. But let's get on to number two. Now, number two is going to be like Snyder slash Eggersville. These neighborhoods back right up against each other. They're both inside the town of Amherst, but Snyder and Eggersville, what it, it doesn't have in walkability, it makes up in centrality and convenience. This is the most inside the town of Amherst, you don't get a more convenient neighborhoods than these two neighborhoods right here, especially when it comes to Snyder. If you're on Maine and Harlem or like Maine and Eggert, you wouldn't know if you was inside the city or you was in the suburbs the way this is always jam packed with traffic. So many people outside, all that good stuff. These two intersections will give you an urban feel and a heartbeat, but you make a right or left on one of them neighborhood streets instantly suburban like snyder is really that old suburbia those old tutors bungalows those old colonial style homes that's been taken care of you get that old suburban feel right inside of snyder and it is some of the most beautiful finest homes that you really really can have and i think one of the dopest parts about it that a lot of people don't pay attention to years and years ago they had these like stone entranceways right that still is around today you talk about something those stones probably was built in 26 1926 if not a little bit before then and they still are up the town makes uh takes care of them you have these huge islands in a lot of the middle of uh, the neighborhood streets i mean there's a lot going on inside of snyder and again your short drives away from everywhere you're probably 12 minutes from downtown no problem three minutes from any major highway and you can get to any major suburb in about 10 minutes 13 minutes if that right so there's a lot of pros when it comes to snyder if i was looking for a single family right now Snyder may or may not be my place to be, I'll tell you that. Now, when it comes to living inside of Snyder, it's not as expensive as Williamsville, right? And the taxes is dang short, not as high. You're talking about an average of $345 to move into Snyder. But if you guys are looking for something more bigger and still kind of want that centricality, the highest house that sold uh, the most money inside of Snyder was $1.15. So you can definitely get a massive home if you want really want that centricality, but you don't wanna be way out yonder 25 to 30 minutes away. Now, number three is going to be East Aurora. And I think this is one of the most slept on suburbs out here. I'm in East Aurora a lot now, and it is beautiful. And the reason why I think it's only slept on is because it's in the Southern tier, right? It's in that, it's one of those South towns. You hear about the snow and all that stuff the South, South towns get, but East Aurora is really a world of its own. It's, it's very, very comparable to Williamsville. You talking about walkability? East Aurora's, East Aurora's Main Street is almost twice the size of Williamsville Main Street, probably with more bars, if not just the same amount of bars, right? So it is night bars and restaurants and stuff like that, I always call them bars, but there's a lot of different stuff going on in East Aurora, especially for you guys that's heavy in the arts, heavy in the plays, heavy in that, that nice vibrancy, that bounce. Like East Aurora has its own bounce, I'm telling you guys, and it's super fun. This is one of the last open container towns in the U.S. You can go eat with your friends, take that same cup right outside the bar or restaurant and go on to the next one or go home. Like there's a lot of things that's really positive when it comes to the East Aurora area and the school districts. I think uh, niche.com got them ranked as like a B or like an A minus, something like that. So it's still a very good school district as well. And hands down, this is probably the most safest suburb on this list, probably in all of Western New York and Buffalo. And that says a lot because you're talking about outranking Amherst, but no exaggeration, I don't think East Aurora had a, has had a murder in like 25 to 30 years. I kid you not. If you leave your kid's bike on the front lawn, it's going to be there by the time he wake up in the morning or she come home from school. Like East Aurora is super, super safe. And one of the things a lot of people don't notice about East Aurora is that you actually get a lot more land 
for your dollar. So if you're talking about, especially if you're looking at, uh, if you don't live directly inside the village of East Aurora, but you live in like the town of Aurora, which is five minutes outside the village, not even, you get almost an acre of land per house when it comes to living in East Aurora. So you get a lot more land, you get a lot more, you know what I'm saying? You get you get to rub your elbows with your neighbors, you don't have to be that close. I think that's one of the key factors about East Aurora that a lot of people miss. And it is really just because it's 25 minutes away from downtown Buffalo. So it's a little bit of a drive, but you have all your major shopping inside the village, whether you stay on Main Street, or there's like one or two shopping plazas um, just outside of Main Street, or take a trip 15 minutes up the transit road go do all your shopping and come back home 15 minutes it's nothing to it now to move inside the actual village of Easter Road, it's a price tag i can tell you very very expensive you talk about four hundred and thirty-six thousand dollars to move inside the village and if you want to move into the town of Aurora now again just outside the village you're only looking at around three hundred and one thousand and again you're getting a lot of more extra acres of land which is really really nice now number Four. If you guys didn't already, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell for your boy. Means uh, means a lot to me, and it helps out the channel a ton. All right. So number four is going to be Clarence. This is truly country suburban at its finest when it comes to Clarence. And honestly, if you're in Clarence, like you make a wrong turn one two times, you could be on a country road for a mile. You wouldn't even notice. Like Clarence is really that country suburban feel for sure. Clarence is a small town. Very, I think I don't think Clarence has like 5,000 people in it. No exaggeration. Maybe even less than 4,000 people. But Clarence is probably, if not our most affluent, one of the most affluent suburbs that we have around Buffalo, which is crazy to say, right? Very affluent. You got a lot of professionals that live inside of Clarence. And here's the most shocking statistic, right? 98% of people in Clarence own their home. So you're talking about people, I always tell it, I always tell people this, like Clarence is one of those areas where you just go buy a plot of land and say, just build my house right there type thing. Like you will see a lot of people just spread out all types of different ways with a bunch of land and the house just sits kind of kitty cornered or however they want to build it from anywhere from a ranch to a million dollar home. Like you'll see a lot of homes are just kind of spread out. Now, if y'all remember the Clarence video that I did, like Spalding Lake, they have some new developments going on too. So if you don't want those kind of old houses, they have Spalding Green right now, which is literally right next door to Spalding Lake. If you're still gonna pay five, six, seven, eight hundred thousand dollars, but you don't want the old feel, you want something modern, there are plenty of new build communities that's going on right now. So if that's something that you guys think about, make sure you guys hit me up the call so that we can get you guys connected over there. And again, you'll have your few kind of subdivisions too as well. So if you just wanna move into a subdivision instead of building new or buying that older home, you can always do things like that as well. Now, Clarence is going to be a highly, highly rated school district. Clarence, Orchard Park, Williamsville always battle for the top three. So you're moving into a really, really good area, which is nice. But again, all those amenities that kind of spread out, the land added on top, you have a price tag, right? The median home price in Clarence as of last year was $525,000. That's a lot. But hear me out here those million dollar homes do hike it up like you know what i'm saying so those they hike it up now it's still going to be very expensive to live in clarence out of the 317 homes that were sold last year 75 of them so just under a third of them were under 300,000. so you can kind of find that first time home buyer's price inside of there but for the most part you're going to be paying the half a million dollar price or a little bit above and again Clarence is one of those areas that people went to go build their forever home. Like, right, they'll stay in there 30, 40 years. Again, that statistic, 98% of people own their homes. If I build something I always wanted, I ain't going nowhere either. All right, finishing up this list, last but not least, is going to be Orchard Park. Now, 
This Orchard Park is obviously where the Bills play. The Mafia go to celebrate every single Sunday. But this is an area where a lot of our professional athletes live. This is an area where a lot of our, you know, higher professionals, lawyers, doctors, like, you know, like people of high white collar, fan, I can't even say fancy, but very affluent area. Like Clarence, Clarence is like the North Towns affluent, right? And then Orchard Park will kind of be like the South Towns affluent, if that even makes sense, right? So that's kind of how you can really see those two, in my opinion. And if you're talking about some houses, man, like there are some showstoppers, I promise you, in Orchard Park. Like some true showstoppers. And again, it is in a South Town, so it's kind of near like the Oyster, uh, East Aurora's, the Hamburg's. West Seneca is kind of more towards the border up there, but you know, eating all that stuff, it's it's down there, right? It's in those, it's, it's in the South Town. Remember when we had that storm last year? When you're talking about we got two, three feet, four feet of snow, or that historic where everybody was like, we got six, seven feet of snow? That was Orchard Park. When the Bills had to get out, it was people in trucks at the crib in Orchard Park plowing them out of there. Like, that's Orchard Park. Beautiful, very nice, very wealthy. Snow, heck yeah, you can count on it. <laughs> now, and, a, and again, same thing with Easter Royal. A lot of people write it off kind of just because of A, the affluence, and then it's 25, 30 minutes away from this, uh, you know, this, this downtown Buffalo. But you out there every Sunday anyways, take a shorter drive and just move out there. Now, to me, I know what you're thinking, like, because it's so far out there, is there anything out there as far as shopping and stuff? Yes. Orchard Park has their own mall, which is McKinley Mall. They have their own shopping districts. Like, you really don't have to leave Orchard Park. And a lot of people, Orchard Park always gets this rap as, like, the Orchard Park, like, bubble. Hey, it's not very diverse out there, but it's getting better. It is getting better. But people always say, like, Orchard Park has their, like, own bubble, uh, bubble if, if you were to say, right? It's not as, like country as like a as like a clarence or maybe even the east aurora hamburg area like it's really not country it's really more of like a spread out suburbia if that really makes sense like like this is not an area but you you're going to be walking by any means right like you're not going to be walking down there they do have street lights but ain't no sidewalk on the streets so it's very spread out so instead of like cornfields think more like trees woody greenery right instead of an old farmhouse or a bunch of farmhouses around think more like a truly custom built two-story right like <laughs> it's not more country as more of it is a spread out suburban feel now one thing I do hear a lot of my clients that kind of come up here and want to kind of move up to the Orchard Park area, but it's a drawback, there's really no downtown area. Like niche.com has this rated as like a B plus community as far as nightlife. Please, it's more of a D plus. Ain't nothing going on at night in Orchard Park for sure. So as always, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video and this was literally voted on by the people. So. People in Buffalo, let me know how they did. You know, like these are based on reviews, me finding stuff. I mean, Reddit polls, uh, polls, like all this stuff. These are really like the top five that was like constant in everybody's kind of list. And plus, niche.com did a really good job as far as kind of narrowing down these things. There's a couple on there that I, you know, I would throw Kenmore in the mix too. As far as best suburbs, man, I think. Kenmore is slept on in the North Towns as much as East Aurora is slept on in the South Towns, to be honest with you. So there's a couple more that I would think of, like Kenmore, man. There's some spots in Amherst that are more like neighborhoods than towns, but overall, I think this list was really, really solid. Again, that's just my opinion. I'm not steering you in no type of way. There's a lot of suburbs, and again, it's going to depend on your lifestyle and how you really, really like to live. That's how I always help people out. Like, some people like that country suburban. Some people just want that suburban feel. Some people really like that centrality of, like, a Chitawaga, for instance, that wasn't on this list, right? So, there's a lot of different things. There's a lot of different factors to play. At the end of the day, it's going to be a decision. I just hope this help right i hope this helps now as always my name is Devonte davis the local realtor in and around the buffalo area if you guys are moving up to the buffalo area you know we help a lot of people move up here i'm the one that picks up the phone either myself or somebody very close to me on my team is going to pick up the phone so make sure you guys hit me up with the call email text doesn't matter and as always i will see you guys inside the next one